Welcome back. In this video, we're going to solve quadratics by using the quadratic formula. Of course, recall that standard form of a quadratic equation follows the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. <clears throat> and there are a number of ways to solve for the x-intercepts or the solutions or the roots or the zeros of any quadratic that's in standard form. First, we saw that you can factor. We can easily factor ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero if a equals one, and you can easily see what those factors are. And of course, it's easy as well if c is zero and you just have ax squared plus bx. We will use the square root property if b equals zero and we don't have a linear term. Then it's, it's easiest to subtract c from both sides or add c to both sides and then isolate the x squared and then take the square root. We have also seen that you can complete the square. That is, make any quadratic in standard form into a perfect square trinomial and then use your square root property. Completing the square is easiest if b is even and it's not easily factorable. And the final way to solve for the roots or the x-intercepts or the zeros or the solutions of a quadratic is to use the quadratic formula. And that's easiest if you have something in standard form and a is not one and it's not easily factorable. So let's take a look at a quadratic in standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. And we want to solve for the x-intercepts. We want to solve for x. Well, we can do this by completing the square. So we can divide, we have to divide every term by a if a is not equal to one. So we'll divide everything by a, and I'm going to go ahead and subtract c over a from both sides right away. So I've divided by a and I'm left with x squared plus b over a x plus my blank equals the opposite of c over a. I'll complete the square which leaves me with b over 2a because I multiply this times 1 half and I square it. And I will have to add this b over 2a squared to the other side, so that immediately becomes b squared over 4a squared. So my perfect square trinomial here takes the form of x plus b over 2a quantity squared equals c over a plus, takes the opposite of c over a plus b squared over 4a squared. Well, I would like a common denominator here to add these two together, so I'm going to multiply this by 4a over 4a, so that all equals The opposite of 4ac plus b squared all over our common denominator 4a squared. Now I can go ahead and I can take the square root of both sides. Square root of my numerator, square root of my denominator, and I get x plus b over 2a equals plus or minus the square root. And I'm going to use the commutative property here inside my square root. I get b squared minus 4ac. And the square root of 4a squared, that's a perfect square, all over 2a. And then all I have to do is solve for x. So I'll subtract b over 2a from both sides. And I get x equals the opposite of b over 2a plus or minus the square root of b 
b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And I have a common denominator here of 2a, so I can put this all over my common denominator, and I get x as the opposite of b, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over our common denominator of 2a. And that is the quadratic formula. So given any quadratic equation, we can use the quadratic formula to solve for the x-intercepts. We have standard form and we know what a equals and b equals and c equals, we can substitute into our quadratic formula and solve for x. Here's our quadratic formula. So let's do some sample problems with our quadratic formula. Let's begin with 3x squared plus 4x minus 4 equals 0. So I like to write out what A is, and B is, and C is, and then I can substitute into the quadratic formula. So X equals the opposite of B, so the opposite of 1, plus or minus the square root of B squared, squared minus 4, times A, times C, all over our common denominator of 2A. So we're solving for X, so this is an equation. The opposite of 1 is just negative 1, plus or minus the square root of 1 plus 48. 4 times 3 is 12 times 4 is 48 and a negative times a negative is a positive all over 2a um, which is really 2 times 3. So all over our common den denominator of 6. So we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 49 over 6 equals negative 1 plus or minus 7 over 6. So x equals negative 1 plus 7 is 6 over 6. And x equals negative 1 minus 7, which is negative 8 over 6. So my two answers x equals 1, and x equals negative 4 thirds. So I have solved for the x-intercepts of my parabola. It is going to cross the x-axis at 1, and negative 4 thirds, which is about negative 1 and a third. So those are my two x-intercepts. Let's take a look at our second sample problem. 3x squared equals 6x minus 1. And this one, we'll, we'll need to put it in standard form. So we'll subtract 6x and add 1 to both sides. So we get 3x squared minus 6x plus 1 equals 0. Now I can figure out what a, b, and c are. So in this problem, a again equals 3 equals negative 6 and c equals positive 1. So substituting into my quadratic formula, x equals the opposite of b, negative 6, plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over x equals 6 
plus or minus the square root of negative 6 squared, 36, minus 12, all over 6. Simplifying further, 6 equals plus or minus 36 minus 12 is 24. So we're going to take the square root of 24, which is 2 times the square root of 6, all over 6. I'm going to factor out the GCF in my numerator, and I get x equals 2 times 3 plus or minus the square root of 6 all over 6. Two in the 6 simplify, and x equals 3 plus or minus the square root of 6 all over our common denominator of 3. So our two x-intercepts are 3 plus the square root of 6, six over 3, 3 minus the square root of 6 over 3. And if I would write them as ordered pairs, it would look something like that. And something interesting is happening here with our parabola. If we wrote each one of these, With our common denominator, it would be 3 over 3 plus the square root of 6 over 3, and 3 over 3 minus the square root of 6 over 3. My order pair, keep my order pair with the zeros in there. And this 3 over 3 is 1. This actually turns out to be our axis of symmetry of our parabola. So our parabola has an axis of symmetry. Which is our graph is reflected both to the right and left or top or top and bottom depending on how our parabola sits. So on the coordinate plane, our axis of symmetry here is 1. This is x equals 1. And we go the square root of 6 over 3 to the right and the square root of 6 over 3 to the left from our axis of symmetry to graph our parabola. It's getting a little bit of ahead of ourselves, but a little sneak peek into what you'll be seeing um, in the near, very near future when we start to graph these. And you can see how the quadratic formula will help you put together the graph of not only the x-intercepts, but of the entire parabola. I'm going to save x squared minus 2x plus 3 for you. Do that on your own now and bring that, and I will check that when I see you in class.